What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show, man. Recap with Mo, where we're getting ready to get into another episode breakdown, all right? So tonight, I'm going to go ahead and introduce this new show to my channel here, a show that I've been watching for quite a while now, but I finally have decided to bring it to the channel, and it is Tyler Perry's Ruthless, all right? So... Let's go ahead and get into this, but before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss shit and it that's going down on this channel, all right? With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the synopsis for this episode, episode six, titled Disappearing Act, all right? So it states that while on a run for the highest, Andrew is faced with a whirlwind of trouble. After visiting the children's trailer and learning that it was empty, Ruth grows worried about her daughter's whereabouts. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this right now. So we start this episode right here with um, Andrew and the deputy, and I believe her name is Kate. So if you don't recall what happened in the previous episode, Andrew was on an errand for the highest. He was supposed to take care of the, the bodies that's actually in his trunk right now, right, of one FBI agent and his wife. So anyway, getting back to this episode, um, he has a flat tire here, which he has to pull over. So Deputy Kate pulls up behind him. And at this point, she's questioning, you know, or not really questioning, but in, she's inquisitive at this moment. Like, what's going on? Do you need assistance with your tire? He's like, no, I'm good. So he continues to reassure her that everything is great. Long story short, she doesn't trust him. And she says, obviously, he's hiding something. All right. So from there, she goes back to the car. She gets on walkie-talkie and Andrew was like please don't get on that daggone walkie-talkie or I'm gonna have to do some shit to you so pretty much that's what she does so she calls in to the sheriff's office and while she's on the phone the sheriff is like what's going on no I don't want any coffee or cream or some shit like that and she was like no this is something else more urgent right so she pretty much tells him that she has a strange man who's on the side of the road she's offered to you know give him some assistance and he was like well just leave the man alone but she was like mm, something just doesn't seem right he seems a little way too you know suspicious at this moment and she believes that he has something to do with the you know the rock of douche up, up the road right so he was like while he's talking the fbi agents behind him who are also in the room overheard the conversation on his walkie talkie so they were more inquisitive as well so they were asking what does he look like um and she described that for them um then they asked for the tag number which the tag came back to be from a stolen vehicle so of course they was like well let's go on ahead up there the sheriff actually takes them up there as well so while she's on the walkie talkie calling you know for the sheriff um andrew goes ahead and he goes in and puts her to sleep i mean literally put <laughs> <laughs> he literally puts her to sleep, man. So from there, he knocks her out, takes a gun, and he's headed on his way, right? So from there, we see Daikon. Daikon is now coming in to the um, punishment trailer where one of the guys, one of his soldiers actually took the blame for not searching Aaron because Aaron had a cell phone on him. But you know, his soldier took the route for it. So Daikon is really interested in why his soldier decided to take the rap. So when he goes in there, he's asking him all these questions like, why did you take the rap for me? And his soldier was like, look, you are our leader. You know, we love you and we're, we're down to do anything for you. Some shit like that. So Daikon was like, well, I appreciate that. And the highest also was impressed by you taking the rap for me. So he was like, I'm going to make sure that I put in a good word for you so the punishment won't be as bad. So the soldier is like, well, I really appreciate that, Daikon. He was like, okay. So from there, we see Daikon's ass go over to an additional punishment trailer where we have the opportunity to see Malcolm. His ass is in the electric chair. They're getting ready to do some shit to him. Now, we've already seen what the electric chair, the whole situation that has gone down with the, you know, the elder mother with Lacey. Not Lacey. What's her name? Zane. That's right. So, we already know what can go down in the chair, right? So, Daikon goes in to see Malcolm. And Malcolm is like, look, 
I, I can offer up some shit for you. You know, just let me go home, pretty much. So, you know, Malcolm has been an ass. He's been sleeping with everyone's wife. And pretty much, you know, I, be, I believe that it's time for Malcolm to go. So by any means necessary. That's just how, that's how I feel personally, right? So he tells Daikon that I know Andrew's main weakness, right? So Daikon is interested. He's intrigued at this point. Well, he's like, well, what is that? And he says, Andrew has a son. That kind of is like, we already know that. Like, <laughs> I need you to give, I need you to give me something different. And he was like, no, no, you don't understand. I lo he loves his son. He was like, okay, you need to give me something better. So pretty much, Daikon is like, look, you are an addict, and you know. You up here fiending right now. You're going through withdrawal. And Malcolm, and, you know, initially he's like, no, nah, I'm not an addict. So that kind of calls his bluff. He pulls something out on him. And he's saying, hmm, are you sure? What will you do for this? So Malcolm seeing the package, he was like, hmm, you know, what, what do you need me to do? <laughs> I thought, hold on, wait a minute, Malcolm. I thought you were not interested in the shit. See, I don't even know where to put you, bro. Like, at one time, you trying to be this hard man. I'm not this. I'm not that. But you effing around with everybody's wives. You no good for nobody, man. So at this point, like, it's time for you to go, bro. It's just time for you to go because you made it hard for Andrew. You made it hard for old boy. What's his name that just passed away? Um, Agent Brian. You were the main reason why he got caught up in this shit. Look, it's time for you to go, bro. But anyway, Daikon pretty much plays around with him and he says, look, we'll talk. We'll talk to you later. Pretty much, you know, we'll, we'll talk to you later or we'll see you later or something like that. So from next, we see Joan. We see Joan coming out of the, her trailer. And while she's coming out of her trailer, Aaron is outside of the gate and he's calling for Joan's attention. Well, Joan isn't going to talk to him because she doesn't want to get in trouble with the highest, right? So while she's walking, Ruth follows up behind her to, you know, to inquire what's going down, how much money are they getting. Of course, Joan is not able to convey that information or she won't share that shit with her. I think that's really the case at this point because Joan also believes that Ruth and River are trying to take the money away from her and actually flee from the camp. So both of these individuals don't trust each other, you know, at, at all, but they're trying to work on the same team. So I don't really know how that shit is going to work. But anyhow, um, she requires about her friend. Well, she says, well, I really don't know what's going on, but she's able to see Aaron who was calling, you know, for her attention at the gate. So she really didn't know what was going on. So Ruth is like, OK. So Ruth really doesn't trust her at all because she believes that her friends who had just shown up are in, you know, in cahoots with Joan. So nobody's really trusting anybody around this camp. So I'm intrigued to see how this shit is all going to unfold, right? So from there, we see the highest. The highest is coming up in his, you know, Rolls Royce. And um, everybody's getting ready to leave. They're getting ready to head to the bank. And the highest comes out with his suit on. And they're like, oh, you look good, your highest. He was like, I appreciate that. Also, while he was talking to them, he also conveyed to them that um, Aaron had a cell phone. That's why they had to kick his ass up out of the camp, because we don't know if he's made phone calls or nothing like that. So we really don't trust him as well. So that's why he's outside of the gates. So now Ruth got her hand on her mouth like she can't believe it. Like, oh, my goodness. And Jonah's like, no, that's not good. Man, both of <laughs> <laughs> man, both of these folks are putting on, man, for the highest, man. It's hilarious, and he is falling for it, so we think. So the highest and his, you know, his entourage head outside of the gates, and Aaron runs up to the car, and he's like, your highest, your highest, I need to come back in. And he was like, no, I'm not too sure about that. And he said, what will you do? He said, I'll do anything. So... The highest already knows that Aaron would do anything for his wife. He's already said that multiple times. But what Aaron does not know is that the highest knows that he comes from a background of wealth. So that's his main goal is to get everything that he can possibly get from these individuals. So as he's on his way to the bank, he said, we'll talk about it later. 
So from there, we see Mother Ruth. She's walking and we see, of course, River who follows up behind her. And he's all inquisitive what's going on. And he tells her about Aaron having a cell phone. But by this time, Ruth already knows about the cell phone situation due to the highest. And he told her that while the highest was having his meeting with all the men, that his cell phone went off and the highest was talking about trust. Now, ain't that some shit? Like the main person you did not need to, you know, elf off at the, at this point in time and you trying to get inside of the camp and now all of a sudden the highest don't trust you and he's talking about trust, bro, you could have been dead. But pretty much River conveyed to her that, you know, he really doesn't know what happened. He took, they took Aaron to his trailer, but obviously he didn't sleep with him because that's how they get down in the Rockadushi camp uh, for some reason. So that's what they do. And, um... Ruth is like, where's where's um, Aaron's girlfriend or his wife? I'm sorry. And he was like, well, she's in the trailer right now. So she was like, okay, I'm going to head over there to the trailer. He was like, well, you better be careful. And she was like, look, I'm supposed to be the wife of the Rockadushi. I'm supposed to be the wife of the highest. So I'm going to do whatever that I want to do. And he was like, well, you better be careful. And not in those words, right? So from there, we see that Ruth goes to see... Um, old girl at the highest trailer so of course to get into the highest trailer she had to go through manny who is guarding the highest trailer so when she gets there she was like look and he was like hold on wait a minute where you going she was like do you have to ask all of these questions and he was like yeah i already know you're about to be the wife of the highest she was like exactly so let me in here so he was like go ahead and go even though he really doesn't want her to go but she's aided him in some shit that he got himself into so he was like go ahead and go all right, so once she gets into the trailer, she's looking all around the trailer looking for old girl, which she is not successful. I was like, what the hell? Like, how big is this trailer? Because he got curtains up and all these, you know, the 1980s bees, the ones we used to have in the doorway where you have to knock them things out your way and they fall into your face and shit like that. So I'm like, damn, he in the 19... 19- <laughs> So I was like, man, take some of them bees down. You'll be able to find somebody. But anyway, so um, in the trailer, she's getting ready to back up out the trailer. And she runs into an old girl who is butt ass naked at this point. So when she sees old girl, old girl is like, well, what is this powder that I got on? And she was like, oh, that's the powder of the highest. And she's like, I love the way it makes me feel and shit like that. Like, I've never felt this way before. And she said, I wish that my husband could feel this shit as well. And Ruth, of course, she's been messy because she doesn't trust old girl. She was like, oh, really? Well, your husband is locked outside. And she was like, really? And she was like, yeah. And old girl is like, well, he must did something to the highest. Unfortunately, he ain't going to be able to experience it. And so Ruth is like, really? Like, you don't care about your husband that much if you decided to stay in here and your husband is outside. And she was like, well, I'm here for the highest. So pretty much from there, uh, Ruth is like, okay, are you sure? She was like, yeah, I'm sure. And she was like, well, I'm going to just stay here and daydream. So obviously, the highest has given her ass some good old drugs for real, bro. Because I don't know. I think it's LSD or some shit like that. I'm not sure exactly what he blew on her. But it was like three different things he blew at her at multiple times. So it, it <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, man. But anyhow, all of them who have come to the Rockadushi has obviously experienced this, right? So from there, we head over to the crime scene where Deputy Kate is now locked up, you know, in the front of the vehicle because Andrew is locked up. He don't put her to sleep. And um, the police pull up and the FBI as well, of course. So when they pulled up, they was like, what the hell happened? What's going on? And she was like, I don't know. It seems like he didn't want to harm me, but the sheriff was like, shit, he did harm you. And she was like, well, not really. Like, he really didn't do nothing to me, but put me to sleep. He kept saying, go to sleep, go to sleep. Go to sleep, oh, go to sleep, oh. If you tired, be quiet and go to sleep. <laughs> That's what he did to old girl, bro. He put her to sleep, man. So, um... So while, they're, while she's telling the sheriff about all of this shit, the FBI is listening, of course. And she shares with him that he took her gun away, left her with nothing. He knew he was very knowledgeable about everything, what, what side her gun was on, what side 
taser was on, all that shit like that. So they was like, well, do you think he's, you know, police? Do you think he's a cop? She was like, yeah, but he's a lot more well-trained than we are. And and so the sheriff was like, really? Like, so the FBI was like, well, do you think he's one of us? So they showed her an example of how they take weapons away from people. And they was like, was it like this? And she was like, yeah, it was exactly like that. So they said, mm, okay. But the sheriff was like, what the hell does that mean? And they was like, mm, well, we'll talk about it. See, this is my thing about them, man. Like, y'all ask all these daggone questions, but y'all don't want to share any information when someone else asks you a question. Like, help me help you and, and, and vice versa. But for some reason, you you see you too high on your horse and you don't want to share nothing. You're not really going to get shit done if you're going to do it like that all the time. I'm just saying. Definitely not, definitely not in this small town. So the next thing we see is the highest in this entourage. They're cruising down the highway, listening to some of that Smokey Robinson, you know what I'm saying? And they um they they are immediately stopped by the FBI, who at this time are standing in the middle of the road, of course. So they're like, what's good? What's good? And Daikon looks out the window and he was like, is everything okay? And they pretty much tell him that they had an incident that went down and they're looking for this suspect. So he was like, well, do you happen to have a description? or did he get away and he was like yeah we got a description bald-headed guy such and such and yes he did get away so daikon lets them know that hey we're here to assist in any at in any means um but we'll let the sheriff know if we find out anything so then the woman FBI agent turns around and says, well, what are you guys getting ready to go do? And Daikon responds with saying, oh, we getting ready to go handle some business. And she was like, shit, I ain't even talking to you. I'm talking to him. And I'm like, damn, like, y'all so direct and shit. So the highest responds by saying, we got business. And that's pretty much all he says. And then she's like, um... Well, this is a nice ride you guys are riding in. You must be very, very important. And Joan reaches over and she says, he is. Like, get the hell back. Give me 50 feet. <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty much it on that, man. So, from there, we see um, Aaron standing outside the gate and River goes to meet with him. So, when River comes out there, he's pretty much asking him, um, you know, multiple questions. But Aaron ain't w focused on that shit at all. He's focused on where his wife is, the whereabouts of his wife. River reassures him that his wife is fine. She's resting. And as soon as she comes down, she'll be all right. So Aaron is like, what the hell are you talking about as soon as she comes down? He was like, look, everything is great. So she's going to be all right. But in the meantime, why did you come here? Like, why are you here? And, you know, Aaron pretty much conveys to him that his wife was looking to be healed, to get a healing. And... You know, so he was like, well, she was the one that wanted to come. And Aaron is like, yeah, but he was like, no, 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 no. We both wanted to come. I wanted to come, too. But truth be told, she was the one that really wanted to come because she was having infertility issues. So she thought that the highest would be able to heal her and aid her in her situation. Right. So um, Aaron is like, yeah, I just need to see her. And River is like, well, you're not going to be able to do that right now. You're going to have to wait on the highest to come back and make a decision on that. So he was like, look, I'm not good with that. So from there, River goes on to acquire about his wife and how how good do you know your wife? Do you trust your wife? And Aaron is like, who the hell you been talking to? Like, you sound like my parents. And he was like, what are you talking about? So he pretty much conveys to him that his parents said the same thing about his wife. Like, she's a gold digger. She's only there for the money. So they pretty much disowned him, took him off the trust, took him out of the will and all that shit like that. I was like, damn, over a black woman, bro? Well, I'm going to just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so uh, River found out all of that information that he needed while he's in the midst of talking to Aaron and Aaron is pissed off and he's walking away because he doesn't really want to answer any more questions. Manny comes out there and he was like, River, what the hell are you out here for? You know, you're not supposed to be outside the gates. So uh, River lies and says, oh, I was just out here aiding, you know, our guests, you know, making sure he's OK. So he goes back in and Manny pretty much tells his soldiers, hey, don't let nobody else out these gates. You already know the job. 
all right? So from there, we see Zayn and Ruth. Now, Zayn has been acting crazy this whole time after she done shot old boy and um, gotten rid of some folks. So she's feeling real jittery right now. And she's laughing about stuff that she shouldn't be laughing about. So I'm a little concerned about Zayn. But anyway, um, Ruth comes up on Zayn. And she's asking her how she feels. And Zane is like, I feel great. I feel okay. And she was like, well, I'm a little concerned because, you know, you know, your previous decisions where you've taken people's, you know, you know, breath away. I'm going to just leave it at that. And, and you've done some other questionable things, you know, for the highest sake. Like, so we still want to know, are you in this with us? And, and Zane is like, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm still here with y'all. And she was like, I just have to make it look like I'm in it with him. So Ruth is like, okay, well, that's good to hear. And Zane is like, I just wish that my girls could be here. Like Lacey could be here to see everything going down. Someone that I could talk to. And Ruth, you know, whispers to her, like, I need you to be real quiet about this. But your girl Lacey is still alive. And she was like, huh? And she was like, yeah. She was like, no, I saw. She was like, no, I need you to understand that I've seen Lacey and Lacey is still alive. She's in the infirmary. All right. So I need you to calm down. So she hands her a key, but she tells her to keep it on the low, low. Don't let the elder mother see her. Don't let nobody see her. Definitely not the highest. So she reassures her that she would do so. So from there, we see um, we head back over to the sheriff's office. And now they're asking Kate, Deputy Kate, all these damn questions. And she can't tell anything. She can't really tell enough information. So that the, the male FBI agent is like, look, you're not really telling us shit. So, you know, you've been a little, you know, you're not really being detailed about the shit that you're really trying to tell us. So he's been a little hard ass. So the woman FBI agent comes in and she was like, look, I need you to just chill out, chill out. So while they're asking all these questions, the sheriff is like getting upset as well. So he pretty much walks off and he tells them, look, if you want to tear down this town, do what you're going to do. But I'm not going to be involved in it and know your ass ain't going to follow me. Old boy's like, yes, I definitely am. So while they walk off, the female LPI agent shows her a picture of Andrew. She says, I need you to keep this on the low low, but I need you to tell me if you if this was the guy that handcuffed you to the car. She was like, yeah, that's him. So when she said that, she was like, okay, I need you to keep that on the low. And so Deputy Kate is like, well, who is he? And she was like, oh, I can't tell you anything. That's classified. I'm like, what the hell? Like, you just asked me a personal question. Now you can't tell me a personal answer. Like, what the hell is that? But anyway, let's move on, man. So from there, we see Ruth and, and River. They're talking about this whole situation with Zane because he saw Zane walking real fast, going somewhere real quick. So when he saw her, she didn't say nothing to him. So he was inquisitive about that. Like, where in the hell is she going so fast and not able to talk to me? So, you know, he's knows as hell anyhow. So from there, um, she asked about what was going on outside the gate with Aaron. And he was like, oh, you know, we all good. He was asking about his wife, whoop, whoop, whoop. And she was like, okay, well, I still don't trust him. And he was like, I think you're right. Like, you know, all the questions that I was asking him, it seemed like his wife was out to get that money. So so he stated that he was going to keep an eye out on Aaron. She stated she was going to keep an eye out on old girl, right? So in the midst of the conversation, Ruth pretty much tells him that, look, we need to focus on our goal, get the hell up out of here, and, and do what we need to do to get this money and get home. But in the meantime, she's focused on getting her daughter back as well. So when she tells um, River about her daughter, he says, look, let me give you this. He hands her the key to the children's trailer. So Ruth is like, where the hell you get that from? And he was like, don't worry about it. I got it from Manny while he was asleep. So don't focus on that. Just go ahead and check out on your daughter. So she was like, you sure you're not going to get in trouble? He was like, don't worry about that. So then she just walks on off. She don't say thank you or nothing. So he was like, you ain't going to say nothing about thank you. So from, <laughs> so from there, we see um, uh, we see Zane. She goes over to the infirmary to check in on her girl, Lacey. So when she goes to the infirmary, Lacey is laid up on the little cot. Like she's passed out or she's asleep. And 
and she says to um, Zane that she needs some water. So she says, go ahead and reach down at the bottom of the shelf. I saw the um, elder mother drinking it, so she she presumed that it was water. But it happened to be moonshine, so she spit that shit up real quick. <laughs> so from there, she was like, look, we need to get our asses up out of here, but we need to put together our plans. She said, I'm going to come back for you. She was just happy to see Lacey alive, one of her good friends, man, from the very beginning. So from there, we head over to the children's trailer where we see Ruth entering into the trailer. So they got these bars in front of the children's trailer to protect them, I guess, from anybody wanting to come and see their damn children, right? So when Ruth comes in, there's nobody in there. Everybody's gone. So Ruth is like, what the hell? Like, she looks both directions, and there's no children to be found. So what the hell has the highest done to these babies in the camp, man? Like, I don't know what's going on. Now, I do understand stand and know that he stated to Andrew that he was going to put them out front with his name on them if he didn't come back and do shit. So we don't know if he's made a phone call already to some of the soldiers to get the kids up out of there or what. But what we do know is that the kids are not there. So of course, Ruth is, you know, she feels some type of way about that. So anyway, that's the end of this review, man. Um, let me know your thoughts on this show. Have you watched this show before? If you haven't, this shit is crazy. The highest is crazy. The FBI is crazy. The whole damn show is crazy. So um, check it out. Let me know what you think. Get into the conversation as, uh, as always, man. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.